for our friend, Pastor Raymond Bowie. Hallelujah. Whoa, what a wonderful thing to be in the house of God. He says where the Spirit of God is, there is liberty. Hallelujah. Freedom in the name of Jesus. Freedom because Jesus came to pay the price that we might be free. Hallelujah. He took our burdens to Calvary so that we can be free as the sons and the daughters of the living God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. You may be seated. The Spirit of God is in this place. God wants to work a work in this house tonight. And the Bible tells us about Jesus who came to reveal the Father to mankind. It says in the book of John chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. Without Him was nothing made that was made. And then you go down to verse 13 and it says, And the Word became flesh. God chose more than anything else to make Himself known to mankind by way of of his word that man would know him by the revelation from what God says and as it is 2,000 years later we know what God says from what is written printed and given freely to man the Holy Bible right from the beginning of time before there was time, when the atmosphere all around was darkness and confusion, God stepped into space and he spoke. And by the word of his mouth, God created the heavens and the earth and filled them with everything that God created. And as the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, that the world is framed with the word of God. And so therefore, as we know it, God reveals himself. Like as he speaks in the book of Hebrews chapter 1, that in the times past, in the ancient days of time, that God would speak to us by way of the prophets, but today have spoken to us in no less than His own Son, Jesus Christ, who is the Word of God. And you go all the way forward to the book of Revelations chapter 19, and you will find the Scripture says that when time is over, when the earth comes to an end, Jesus riding on a white horse, he appears. And there is a word that is written on his forehead and it spells to read this, the word of God. And so therefore, God will never be separated from his word. Where God is, God speaks. Because our God is alive. He speaks to people today. And when you hear the word of God, you know that the presence of God in this, is in this place. And as God, who from the days of old, desires more than we desire, that he desires we know him. He made himself known to us. By the things that God did. Through the manifestation of his presence. By the works that he did. That man would know God. And be able to comprehend. Who God is. When the Bible speaks about knowing God, 
It is never hate knowledge. It is never what you read and try to memorize from the books. Knowing God in God's terms has always been experiential knowledge. Do you know him? It means, have you experienced God? And God would always want his children to not only have knowledge of him in our heads, but that we will know him in our hearts. So that we will not just be a people in name. But we will be the children of God in our hearts. Not wearing the cross just over our necks. But we have the cross of Jesus in our hearts. God desires us to know as the Bible says in the book of 2 Peter. The last verse. It says that we might grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And on the backdrop of that was about the second coming of Jesus. That how real and how near his coming is. Knowing that these are the days where we have to contend with our faith. These days where we have to go through the test of fire so that we will come out of these tests more precious than gold. That through these times, we are able to grow in the knowledge of him because God wants us to experience him more and more. And it's that knowledge, that experiential knowledge of God that brings growing is not found when the days are nothing but blissful, fun, wonderful, where there is no care and there is no tears, where there is no pain and there is no sickness, when there is no lack and there is no need, you will never have the experiential knowledge of God. If you truly want to know the Lord Jesus with that intimacy, just as Paul says in the book of Philippians, that I might know him. That I might know him. How do we know him? That I might be able to share, partake in the fellowship of his sufferings. It is not in the good times. But it is in the times where you just wish that time will move fast. Oh, that you could escape. Escape from all these things that so haunt you day and night and you cry that somehow you could live through this. He says those are the times that as Paul yearns that I might know him. After over 30 years of walking with Jesus on the earth. When Paul has gone through all the turbulence and all the hard knocks. When he has suffered the pain and left to bleed to death. And yet Paul would say, oh, that I might know him. So tonight, the common thing that brings us closer to God. And causes us to make our way from our homes and arrive in this place is because there is pain and there is hardship. There is lack and there is need. And there is a desire in your heart that you might know God. 
to experience the power of God to save, heal, and deliver. One day Jesus, having walked a long distance, he arrived in Samaria. John chapter 4 records of that. When he came to a well and there was a woman by the well there to fetch water. And Jesus came to this woman and he asked if she would give him drink. And the Bible says in verse 9 of John chapter 4, the woman replied, Jesus, why is it that you have asked me for a drink? Why would you ask a Samaritan? And not only that, worse yet, I am a Samaritan woman. And this is what Jesus answered in verse 10. And this is what God wants to say to you tonight. He says to this woman, if only you know the gift of God. And number two, if only you know who is speaking to you. You see how amazing it is that all it rests upon is that knowledge that God wants all of mankind to know. We can know and be excellent in technology, in sciences, in economics. We may be learned in different things that requires skills or arts or whatever it may be. And you could have more than one doctorate degrees. But there is one knowledge that man cannot live without and can ill afford to be less of. And that is what Jesus is saying. If only you know the gift of God. If only you know what God is able to do and what God is able to provide and what God is able to bring into your life and what difference God can make in your life. And this woman came so close and yet for the lack of knowledge can be divided as wide as between an ocean. And that would be the same to every child of God. That would be the same for every one of us. We can be pious, religious. We can come to church all of our lives. But what counts is what Jesus asks. If only you know who is speaking to Amen. you. Just like in Matthew chapter 16, here was the disciples. They were walking with Jesus and arrived at a place called Caesarea Philippi. Now Caesarea Philippi is a very significant place, the setting of what it is about that location speaks volumes about the message that God wants to bring. You see, in Caesarea Philippi, that is the place where the people would come and they would worship in those mountain places. And they would be searching for answers to, is this God? Is that God? Is this how I can come near to God? And so Jesus turned to his disciples and asked them the question, Whom do men say that I am? Amen. 
And you know when the disciples answered Jesus, these were the answers. They said to Jesus, some said you are Jeremiah, some said you are Elijah, some said you're John the Baptist, some, some said you're the, some of the, like one of the prophets. You see, this is how the lack of knowledge can rob us of the best and the promises that God gives to us. We could never have them even though it is promised us by God. See, they said that some say you're Jeremiah because of how Jesus has spoken prophetically to them. And so they saw Jesus on that one side of him that he is a prophet. But I tell you from the word of God, he's more than a prophet. And so they think he must be Elijah. Jesus said, if only you know who is speaking to you. He says, if you know that this is he, you would ask me for living waters that when you drink, you'll never thirst again. This woman continued the conversation. And he asked Jesus. When Jesus began to tell her about the hidden secrets of her life. And this woman, of course, was shocked. That how would this man, a stranger, not from her own community, would know her past. Realizing that this must be a prophet, the woman asked Jesus, my forefathers, the Samaritan elders, they say to me, if you want to find God, you come up to these mountains and here in this place, you can find God and you can worship God. But I hear all the time that which has been spoken of by the Jews, your people. And they seem to say, not in these mountains, but up at the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. That if you go up there and worship God, you come seeking for God and you will find Him. See, this woman obviously was so not only shaken by what he, she heard, but there is a stirring all this time in her heart. And there is a cry in her heart probably because she's been so tired of being used and abused. And she could have put up a brave front and laugh at everything and chuckle day long over whatever people say behind her back. But just like I remember when I was a kid and when everybody hated me for all these mischievous things I did. I was a pain to everybody. <laughs> I bothered everyone and if I find someone bothered with me, I just make it worse. And if you tell me, stop, don't do it, I'm going to do it as much as I can. And you tell me, do it now, and I will not do it. 
And when the people just, uh, all these people around me just hated me. They were so bothered and they start cursing me and say all kinds of things to me. I have such a brave front. But inside of my heart, there is a longing. Would somebody love me? Every child, no matter how hardened they seem to be, there is a longing to be accepted, to be loved. And here was this woman asking a question because here was her moment. She had the chance to ask. And so she want to know from this man who has an unusual insight and who obviously must be of God. And under that conviction of the Spirit of God, she yearned to clear her head and settle in her heart what is the truth. And Jesus answered this woman. He says, you worship, but you know not whom you worship. But we, the Jews, we know as the people of God, we know whom we worship. We worship the true and the living God. Well said, Jesus, well said. How true it is. That is a true weakness, a bold weakness for God. But then watch the next statement that Jesus made. He said to this woman, you cannot find God in these mountains. Nah. And you say, yeah, yeah, that's right. Oh, no, you can't find God in these mountains. But then Jesus continued to say, you also can't find God up in the temple mount. Now that would be puzzling. You will stone Jesus if he was your pastor today. You mean you can't find God at God's temple? And in the church? What was Jesus saying? He was not only saying it, but you can see his message consistent in what he was doing with what he was saying. Because he said, that those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. For God is a spirit. And so what Jesus is saying is that if you want to find God and if you want to please God and if you can get anything out of worshiping God, he says it is not in what we know of that day. When you worship him with a, within a system and you have the protocols of worshiping and with all the religiosity and all the forms and the acts and the performances, he says that the Jews have come to a state where what they do is just like the same as a Samaritan seeking God in the wilderness and could never find him. Then, in the following chapters, and all the way down to before he was crucified, Jesus was consistent with his revelation to mankind about how we can know God. You remember the time when the zeal of the Lord was upon him when he entered into the temple and saw the people buying and selling and he went to turn the tables of the money changers and he took a weep and he chased them out of the temple. And what did Jesus say? I'm not going to turn to the scriptures because I want to do what God said to me 
that he wants to do in this house tonight. And we're going to give God time. But you read the scriptures, you will see these references. When Jesus did all those things in the temple, of course, it was unprecedented. It was unexpected. It was unthinkable that anybody would kick these sacred cows. It was a crime of any man to do something like that. It is an institution. How dare this man come in and do something like that? But Jesus did it. And he says, my father's house is a house of prayer. You've made it a den of thieves. You see, for me, it is more than what this statement says, that it's a house of prayer. Because when it is about prayer, it doesn't stop at just prayer. Because if you know God, if you have an experiential knowledge of God, God would not just tell us to pray and it ends there. Because God does not want to command us and make us do something to pray and to pray to Him so that He's just like taking our prayers like a rocking chair and a grandfather sitting on it and just rock and says, Oh, I feel so like God. These people are praying. Oh, come on, just keep praying more prayers. Just offer up the prayers. That is not God. Because going ahead beyond that is this house is not just a house of prayer, but it's a house of answered prayer because God answers prayer. I mean, if it's just a house of prayer, that house is dead. And God is dead. Whoever is in there that you're praying to is dead. God commands us to pray because he's bound by his word and his promise to answer our prayers. He can't do any otherwise because he has already commanded that I will answer those that cry. And so what it is, what is it that is your prayer tonight? You've come to the house of God. Don't stop just at the offering of your prayer. Because this is the house of answered prayer. That God more than you in your own desires. He long to provide and to meet your needs. To answer your cry and to make your joy full. Bible also says that in that time at the end before Jesus went to the cross in the book of Luke that when he was on in the temple a second time did the same thing this is what he said he says, bring those that are lame. Bring them. Bring those that are blind. Bring the sick. Let them come into the temple. And they came in. Now, you got to understand that within the context of that day, what a crime it is in the eyes of the rulers of the temple that Jesus did that. Because you see, in those days, the temple, there was the outer court where the Jews and visitors could come and they can't go beyond that. Then there is the next one, which is the court of, for just the women and the children. And the women and the children cannot go beyond that second court. 
Then you go to the next one, which is the court that is only for men. But then the men themselves could not also go beyond that court. Because the next court was for the priest to go in. So what was happening was the society of that day, they saw that the God that the Jews worship, they, that this God seems to be gender biased. Only the men can go. The women stay. Oh, that God looks down at children because the children has to stay out. That God practices apartheid because only the Jews get in. Other races stay out. Out of bounds. You see, let's keep it within these four walls. That we talk about apartheid in some of these countries, but it seems like our Bible has it first. And here it is. Those that are sick. If you're blind in one eye, there is imperfection on your body. You can't come into the temple. That's why you remember when Peter and John came by Gate Beautiful to go into the temple to pray. The lame man was outside. And there was mayhem, madness when that man came running in. But in that day when Jesus turned the tables of the money changers, he says, bring the sick in. Wow, that was a breakthrough for that day. Change sounded from the top of the temple down to the bottom. Because these lame and the crippled and the blind and the dead and all those that were lepers was coming into the temple. Oh my goodness, can you imagine the men of the cloth, the horror, they turned white like a ghost. <sighs> but Jesus did it. And, the, and these sick started to come in and he began to heal them. Oh, praise be to God that the church of Jesus Christ is beginning to be revealed. What the church is to be like. What the house of God provides. What the temple of God would produce. They'll come in one way, they'll go out different. They'll come in with their burdens, they'll go out lifted. They'll come in sick, but they'll go out healed by the power of Almighty God. Oh, hallelujah. They can come in downtrodden and sad, miserable, depressed, but they'll go out with fullness of joy. Oh, hallelujah. That's the temple of God. That's the church that Jesus is the head of. Oh, that's not all. The children. What about the children? Oh boy, I tell you. That's when the priest would have fainted. Because there, the children started to scream and sing praises. Did you remember that? Oh, they began to praise, worshiping God with high praises, high pitched sounds too. And Jesus said, That's perfect praise. The children got in. Oh, dear me. You see, knowing God. 
many a times. We have so many different things that limits us by the way it sits on our minds. That we just somehow cannot ascend above all these things that becomes a barrel, burial to us, attaining all that God is and wants to be in our lives. So let it be known tonight that as it is written from the days where Jesus came to restore the kingdom of God in the earth, this is what it's supposed to be. That you've come with the right attitude, with the right desires tonight. That there is no separation between us, young or old, black or white. There is no separation between us, male or nor female. And that we have come to this house that we don't have to be embarrassed, we don't have to be afraid, we don't have to be ashamed that we have needs. That we are hurting or we are in pain. That we are burdened. And that there is many things that we desire of God that he will fill our lives with. We don't have to be ashamed because he says that this is the place where prayers are answered. If you don't need a prayer to be answered, stay home. So let it be that from this day, to be changed forevermore. That you come to the house of God. Because you need God to do something for you. That every one of us stands on equal playing field. That we need the Lord and we need him now. And it is for us to know. That God. Is not like man. He looks at us. He knows us better than we know ourselves. And he wants more than anything else. That he who has made us in his likeness and in his image. The perfect God. Who has done a work that is nothing less than perfect. But because of sin, waywardness, and the pride and greed of man. That has caused us to suffer the pain, the hurts, to suffer the abuses, and to suffer the ill health. That God, more than you and I, would want to see mankind restored by his mighty hand that heals us of our sickness. So when they came into the house of God, they came in one way, they came out changed. They came in blind. They came out of that place made whole. They came in carried by somebody else because they couldn't walk. But they walked out of their, on their own. Oh, what a marvelous thing it is to see the lepers rejected in their filth. But God accepted them and cleansed them. And they would go out like it never happened. That's what the house of God is. And I pray that tonight for the glory of God that comes down and for what God wants to do, may we not just take it and shortchange ourselves 
because it's not just one withdrawal. But God would give us checkbooks that we don't have space to fill our cars. That we can withdraw and withdraw and withdraw and withdraw from heaven's bank. We can withdraw whenever there is a need for someone to be healed. There is a need for someone to be transformed. There is a need for someone to be delivered. There is a need for someone to be changed. Oh yes, we come to heavens and we withdraw that power of God and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So that every need that walks through that door will go out with praise. And for us to enjoy that innocence when we were not so washed in our minds by the corruptness, the corruption of this generation. That God is not real. God would not keep his word. That God has changed. That God is never that way. Where we have raised up in our minds arguments against the word of God. But we become like little children. In our innocence, once again, with pure praise to God. Because we have come to experience Him and with experiential knowledge, we lift up the name of Jesus. God wants us to experience him tonight. God spoke to me two nights ago when I was praying for tonight. That he said to me that there are people here tonight that are sick and God wants you to experience him. That he would heal you tonight of your sickness. You don't have to go home the same way you came in tonight. You can leave your sickness behind and go home healed by the power of Almighty God. The power of Almighty God is already in this building. And he's ready to heal you of your sickness. I'm going to pray more than one miracle prayer tonight. But God said to me that in this first miracle prayer, there are three kinds of sickness he wants to heal first. Now, I'm not talking about medicine where something will happen a week or a month from now. I'm talking about the healing power of God. That right where you are, when you can still feel the pain, when you can feel the discomfort, when you know that the sickness is there and has been there, suddenly it's gone. That is a miracle of God. And that is what God wants you to receive tonight. The first sickness that God wants to heal is if you have been suffering from a bone condition. You have a backbone spinal condition. You've been suffering from difficulty with bending your back and getting up and or you have kneecap conditions. You may be suffering from arthritis and rheumatism. Somebody had been, have had an accident and something is wrong with your bones for a long time and God wants to give you a miracle. You may have had a fall. And something happened to your bones. Or you have suffered a stroke. And you have lost the use of one or more of your limbs. 
Get ready. God wants to give you a miracle tonight. Not many days ago, I had a woman in San Jose that I was not expecting to preach there. And I went to San Jose for some other meetings concerning the university. And I came to this church and they wanted me to pray for people. And there was a woman that came up to me and she tried. She wanted so desperately for her life to change once more. Because her whole life changed the day she had a stroke. And she was half paralyzed. She could barely make it. Not even easy with a walking stick. I walked towards her. I took her hands. And I took her down the aisle. aisle and I walked with her. And then I took her right back. And she was walking and then I started the second round with her and I said all right run and she began to run like she's never had a stroke before that's the power of Almighty God and God wants to give you that miracle tonight number two if you're suffering from a breathing condition you had asthma for a long time or you have difficulty breathing, you have to use pumps or medicine or whatever apparatus you have, you need. God wants to heal you tonight. And you know who you are. That you have been breathing and suffering with your breathing. And when you sleep at night, you've been, you have sinus since you were, I don't know how long ago, you've suffered from sinus and it's blocked your nose. God's going to clear it all right here right now number three if you have been suffering from a hearing problem you're deaf in one ear you are hearing interference sounds all kinds of funny things and distorted music whatever it is and you 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 have a hearing problem god wants to heal you tonight this morning there was a man um in the service this morning this man was um, a Japanese man and when he was seven, 17 years old he tried to build a handmade a, a, a homemade gun Mr. Taka and that homemade gun that he tried in his first fire busted his eardrums He's 68 years old now. And it happened when he was age 17. He says, I'm so bothered by everybody shouting at me because I can't hear what they were saying. Last night, in the healing service with the number of people that were healed, this man was touched by God right where he stood. In fact, he was at the last row. And just like those of you that are watching through streaming, God by his spirit is right by your side. And it doesn't matter what your condition is. And it does not matter what the doctors have said to you. And it does not matter how you feel right now. The spirit of God is right there by your side. What you need tonight is not the touch of a man. You need the touch of God. And God is a spirit. He's right there. God opened this man's ears nearly 50 years now. He came to church this morning and he says, Now everything is too loud. And God wants to give you that miracle. It reminds me of a Japanese man just some months ago when I was in Japan. And this man came up and he was obviously not a Christian. And he said to me that he has been feeling so weak. His whole body is weak, anemic. 
And, and, and now after the miracle prayer, standing where he was receiving the touch of God, he says, I feel so strong. Oh, I said, that's wonderful. How do you know? He says, I, I, I feel it all over my body that I am a changed man. And then he says, can I do something? I said, sure. He says, I want to stand on my head. I said, all right, stand on your head. And I thought that that was, you know, what he used to do when he was strong. So he attempted, he did the first one, he did the second time, and finally he stood up the third time. And then he went down again and he did it fourth time and he stood longer. So he got back up on his feet so that I don't have to talk to him this way. And he got up and, and then I said to him, you can do it. I said, how old are you? He says, I'm 80. Don't try, don't, don't try, please. He said, I am 80. I said, you're 80. I said, did you used to do it? He says, no, this is my first time. Were you there, Eunice? You were there? You were there, all right. Okay. I'm not lying, right? That's it. Oh, praise God. And there, there he says, this is, this is the first time. I said, oh, he says, you told me to do what I cannot do before. I could never stand on my head before. <laughs> And this is what I'm going to tell you to do. The power of Almighty God is already here. If you are sick in any of these three areas, in your bones, suffering from breathing conditions, or you have a hearing problem, and you're ready for a miracle from God, I want you to stand on your feet. The rest of you remain seated. Only those that have these three kinds of sickness, you are here. There's some more people over there. Yes. I can already see some people being healed by God even before I pray. And over on this side, in the middle section, God is already healing you. The power of God is all over this building. After I finish the miracle prayer, I want you to do what you cannot do before. Not stand on your head, but whatever you cannot do before because of your sickness, you do it. If you cannot move, you're lacking in mobility, or you cannot bend or whatever, some of you may need to just get out to the house later and get some space and check your body. You'll be amazed what had happened for you. Because Jesus is in this house. This is the house of answered prayer. This is the house of healing. This is the house of high praise. I want you now to put your hand over your sickness. Wherever that sickness is. You do the same thing in your home. Wherever you're watching, you do exactly the same thing. You take your hand and you put it on your sickness. In wherever that sickness is, you place your hand there. But if you are sick in more than two places, you put your hand over your forehead. Because you only got two hands. Put your hand on your forehead. I want you to get ready. The power of God is already here. And so God is just going to heal you very quickly. And after I finish the miracle prayer, the healing power of God will already be on your body. Don't be concerned about what is happening because it's the healing that Jesus is giving you. I'm going to pray the miracle prayer now. In the name of Jesus, I bind that spirit of arthritis and rheumatism. I bind now in Jesus' name backbone and spinal condition, lower back conditions. I bind you now in the name of Jesus. I bind in Jesus' name every kneecap condition, anchor bones in the name of Jesus. I command necks and shoulders to be free in the name of Jesus. 
I bind every spirit of paralysis. You foul crippling spirit. Go in the name of Jesus. And in the name of Jesus. Pain I command you to go and never return. And in the name of Jesus. I bind every foul spirit of asthma. I bind every condition that causes breathing difficulties. Lung infections. Go in the name of Jesus. I uproot sinus right now. There it goes. There it goes. In the name of Jesus. I command sinus to clear. Now. There it goes. In the name of Jesus. Hay fever. Every form of irritation to your breathing. In the name of Jesus. Go. And in the name of Jesus. I bind you foul spirit of deafness. I command you to come out of those ears now. And in the name of Jesus. I release the healing power of God. Right now. By the stripes of Jesus. Be healed. There it is. I release the resurrection power of Jesus. Now over your body. Receive your miracle. Receive your miracle. Receive your miracle now. There it is. There it is. That's the power of God on your body. Something is happening to you all across this room. From the back to the front. Something is happening to your body. Because that's the healing power of God. That is moving in your body now. People are being healed everywhere. Now quickly take your hands off. Open your eyes. Look up here. Now do what you cannot do before. Get to the house. Move your body. Breathe. Jump up and down. Check your hearing. You find that the ears have popped. Do something that you cannot do before. Check it now. There are many people that God has already touched. I can see them. Don't just stand there. You quickly do what you cannot do before. You need to do that because that is in it that's receiving your miracle. Quickly, quickly. If you need to move around, if you need to walk around, if you need to go around in circles, that's right. That's the power of Almighty God. There are more people over this side. You know that you're healed. Do what you cannot do before. Oh, glory be to God. Glory be to Now keep checking. Bend your back. Do it without this. Just walk. Just walk. Somebody stand next to her. Walk in the name of Jesus. Now, if you have done what you could not do before and you found that you are healed, you found that the pain is gone and you are free, you found that your hearing is restored, you found that your breathing is clear, you know that you are healed, lift up your hand to me. Lift up your hand. Look at this. Look at these hands. If you know you're healed, lift your hands and wave at me. Oh, glory be to God. Look at those hands now. Now, now listen to me. <laughs> if you know that you are healed, your hands is raised. One more time, lift it up. Your hands is raised. Come on down. Tell me what happened. Quickly. Come, 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 come. Come get out from your seats. Come up here to the front. Tell me what happened to you. Come quickly. Come quickly. Those of you that are coming down, you're not standing by faith. It's all right. If you're standing by faith, keep standing and God will heal you. But if you know you're already healed, come on, come on down. There are some more people. If you have raised your hands, come. Tell us what happened to you. Keep receiving your miracle. Keep receiving it. There are some more people that are healed. And as I talk to them, the power of God keeps working. When I talk to them, find out what happened to them. Find out what happened to them. When, when, when as I talk to them, you will keep experiencing your miracle. And the power of God is still working on your body. And once you know you're healed, you come down, down to the front and tell us what the Lord has done. My friend, what happened to you? Come. Foul spirit of heart disease. 
I command it to go in Jesus' name. I bind every foul spirit that causes liver conditions, kidney failures. Go in the name of Jesus. Sugar diabetes. I bind you now in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, I uproot cancer cells. I curse cancer cells that die at its roots. In the name of Jesus, I command groves to disappear. In the name of Jesus, I bind every foul spirit of blindness. I command cataracts to be removed. Now in the name of Jesus, blur visions, double visions, go in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, retainer detachment, go in the name of Jesus. And in the name of Jesus, every blood condition, every skin condition, Go in the name of Jesus. And in Jesus' name, no matter what the name of that sickness or disease may be, I come against you in the name that is above every name. And in that name of Jesus, leave now and be gone in Jesus' name. I release the healing power of God now. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Receive your miracle now in Jesus' name. Be healed. There it goes. That's the power of God on your body, back in your homes, watching. Now in this place, receive your miracle. That's the power of God on your body, in your eyes over that area of affliction. Now in the name of Jesus, take your hands off, open your eyes, look up here. Do what you cannot do before. Check your body, check your eyes. Check wherever it is, press into where the growth is, you find that it's gone. The miracle power of God is in this place. Now, I understand that there are many of you that need to take the test of time or you need to get examined by the doctors, go see the hospital, get an x-ray. I understand that. And some of you, many of you may need to do that. Go ahead and do it. Come back with the praise report and give God the glory. But there may be some of you that when you check now, you will know. Check it. And you'll find that God has healed you. I want to pray one more miracle prayer. You may be seated. The greatest miracle of all. It's not the opening of a blind eye. It is not the uncocking of a deaf ear. It's not the crippled walking. That's not the greatest miracle of all. But the greatest miracle of all is the healing of your soul. And if you are hurting, you are afraid that you are under a curse, and there is no peace in your heart. You don't know Jesus as your Savior and Lord. And you carry into this hall a load of sin. And you're looking for something that is great enough and power that can change your life. You've come to the right place. You see these miracles changes the lives of these men and women the same Jesus who died on the cross to pay the price for the forgiveness of your sins is here tonight so that you don't have to go home with your load of sin you can leave it behind and walk away a free man and woman you're born to be free you're born to live free and God gave you all that is in your world. That life need not be a pain and a misery, but be a joy, a satisfaction, and a fulfillment. Tonight, 
Jesus is here to change your life. I want to offer up the next miracle prayer. And in this miracle prayer, I'm going to ask Almighty God to change lives in this place. I am asking in this miracle prayer for your sins to be forgiven. And if you say to me tonight, Sir, when you offer up this miracle prayer, please include me in this prayer. I want my sins forgiven. I want the peace of God. I want the power of God to change my life. I want every one of you, would you stand on your feet? Everyone in this hall, please stand on your feet. I'm about ready to offer up this miracle prayer if you, you say to me, Include me in this prayer. I want my sins forgiven. I want a peace of God. I want my life changed. I want Jesus to come into my heart so that God is with me from today for the rest of my life. If this is what you want, wherever you are standing, all the way to the back, if this is what you want, you want me to offer up this miracle prayer for you, quickly lift your hand up to me so I can see you. Yes, yes, yes. Is there anyone else? You don't know Jesus. Your sins has never been forgiven. This prayer is for you. You have never had the peace of God in your heart. This prayer is for you. You have never had your sins forgiven. This is your night. Keep your hands up. We'll pray for you. I want the leaders of the church or people who are with that responsibility to just look around and see these hands lifted so you can recognize them, you know who they are. They are precious to you. They are people whom God has loved and watched over the days of their lives right up to this time that God will pour His love and power into their hearts. Would you keep your hands up? If you're lifting up your hands, I'll pray this miracle prayer for you now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you and we bring all these precious lives to you. That Jesus, you have come 2,000 years ago to take their place on the cross. And tonight, you've come for them to give them eternal life, the peace of God to be poured into their hearts and the love of God that will change them forever. I ask you right now in the name of Jesus, let every curse of sin be broken now in Jesus' name and make them free. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will come into their hearts as Savior and Lord as they accept you and receive you into their hearts. And I pray that you will make them from today the children of God. Thank you, Jesus, that you'll fill their hearts with peace from heaven. And I thank you that from this day, goodness and mercies will follow them all the days of their life. For we ask and pray all these in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody says, Amen, Amen, Amen. Praise God. Come on, let's give the Lord a big praise in this place this evening. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you, everyone. You may be seated for just one moment. We're going to dismiss with a word of prayer in just a moment. But if you would like to just sow into pet.